तब मूर्ति विनोदकारी पल पन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जे ह नजर समी पेर हो हमारी ए ह नजर समी पेर हो हमारी ए ह गणेश महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. <coughs> Bhagwan Swami Narayan has described in his Divine Vachnamrut that there are four kinds of Satpurush that come on this earth we'll learn more in depth about the four but today's katha will consist of understanding the highest level ranked satpurush that bhagwan swaminarayan has described in his vachnamrut this kind of satpurush has the special ability of transforming salty jeeves or souls into sweet jeeves now that's just a type of metaphor bhagwan swaminarayan uses but bhagwan swaminarayan is talking about how these kinds of satpurush have the ability to transform the most wicked cruel of dicot people into very very holy devotees of god and such kind of satpurush has the ability to change that person's destiny forever today we're going to listen to a story on sadguru shri gunatitan swami sadguru gunatitan swami was a very very great saint in the time of bhagwan swami narayan and after bhagwan swami narayan ascended back to akshardham he spread his glory through his talks and nonetheless he turned the most wicked into the most pious of devotees we'd like to listen to a story here today on valero varu and his dicot ways and how gunatetan swami changed him for the better Swami Narayan Hare The title of the story is From a Daikat to a Devotee In the village of Mansa in the region of Babariyawad there lived a Kathi Darbar named Mamiya Varu Babariyawad is pretty much a region in uh, Gujarat which is a uh, more of a desert region which has a uh, which is filled with cactus He had two sons Sidvaru and Valerovaru Valera's half brother Sid had taken over Valera's share of their ancestral land leaving Valera landless and devoid of a livelihood Now both of these brothers must have had some kind of feud and in that feud they had must have an argument and Sidvaru he took the land of Valerovaru which belonged to Valero Varu out of frustration Valero took a life of a bandit he began raiding surrounding villages stealing livestock and exacting savage retribution upon anyone who dared to cross him now the situation was Valero needed some kind of livelihood he needed some kind of uh, way to make some money and without this land in that time it was very difficult to get by to get food water and to get anything it was very difficult so instead of taking a way of working or taking a way of just uh, earning some money uh, some other way 
Valero Oru actually took the extremes of becoming a bandit. He raided surrounding villages. He attacked random farmers. He stole livestock. He did what he wanted because there was two reasons. Number one, his livelihood. And number two, he had a very, very much uh, a feud. You can say um, kind of like a, a vengeance for his brother. And due to that, he was doing this act. He would attack random farmers, plowing their fields and kill them in cold blood. Terrified by his senseless violence, people began to abandon their villages for safe, safer ha havens. Valero spread this violence to intimidate his brother, his half-brother, into returning his rightful share of their father's property. But Sidvaru was also ruthless and not only to be easily intimidated. Now, we can see the intention behind why Valero did this was so that he would intimidate Sidvaru, so that Sidvaru would return that land. But Sidvaru was ruthless and also he did not accept any of this and he was not easily intimidated. So this feud occurred back and forth, back and forth. And in one of those days, Sadguru Gunatitan Swami was traveling in that region with his group of saints and bhaktos. They were making their way through the wilderness when eight armed bandits blocked their path. Those bandits belonged to the group of Valero. Valero was their leader and the bandits followed Valero. Many in Swami's uh, group began to tremble at sight due to the cold-blooded blo killers. Swami reassured them, what are you afraid of? What do they have that we can, they can possibly steal from us? Swami's, the santos did not carry money, they did not have any kind of jewelry, gold, silver, diamonds, rubies, nothing like that. All they had was Bhagwan and their clothes and their puja. So Swami is saying, why are you all afraid? There's nothing that they can steal from us, we don't have anything. But Swami's group was not afraid of the theft, but rather death, which seemed to be staring them right in the face. One of the bandits pointed his rifle at the group and told them to walk where Valero was waiting for them. At the mention of Valero's name, everyone expected for Swami, except for Swami, felt their legs go weak. Valero Varu was infamous throughout the Babariyavar for his senseless violence. The bullets of his guns had pierced the hearts of countless innocent souls and the stroke of his sword had, had severed countless heads from their bodies. The group could almost feel their life force draining away. How could they possibly escape from this? Now obviously the group was very very concerned for their life because Gunaditan and Swami did not have any weapons Neither did the santos, neither did the devotees that were there. Gunatitan and Swami had a strict vow of nine violence and all the saints. And even if they were, would get beaten, Swami or any of the santos or haribhaktas would not retaliate back. That was the vow of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. From this we can understand that in our life, we may encounter many ups and downs. We may even encounter some negativity in our life but as Bhagwan Swaminarayan's devotees as his followers as his children our main duty is not to retaliate back retaliation is only for warriors and Bhagwan Swaminarayan has created sadhus not warriors Bhagwan Swaminarayan has created saints that have the utmost pure intent of only doing well for this opposite soul. Bhagwan Swaminarayan has not created those who want to take retaliation and vengeance back for anyone or everyone. Swami told everyone, don't worry, let's go with them. Maharaj is with us, so what is there to fear? 
Sadhguru Gunatitan Swami and all the Nansanto of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and even till this day are Puja Guruji. One thing that remains a consistent, a constant, one thing that remains a variable in the life of Satpurush, the Ekantik Satpurush, is their faith for God. Gunathinan Swami did not say that we have many people in our group so we can outnumber number them. We have tactics so we can outsmart them. We have many other things so that we can get away from them. Instead, Swami said, we have God. We have Bhagwan. So why are you worrying? Relying solely on God to be Sarvakarta, the all-doer, is the most fundamental principle. And according to the Vachnamrut, believing Bhagwan Swami Narayan to be Sarvakarta Harta, 100% the all-doer of everything, is the very karan or reason for liberation. Bhagwan Swami Narayan has stated this in his Vachnamrut. And here Sadguru Gunatitan Swami is implementing that knowledge practically through his understanding in such a very, very, you can say, adverse circumstance. Swami is saying, we have Bhagwan. What are we worrying? What are you worried about? The party moved forward with the armed bandits in front and Swami calmly following them. A mara in his hand and the Swaminarayan mantra on his lips. Behind Swami walked all the sadhus and devotees. Swami walked very calmly. Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. Not worrying or concerned about anything. Saying Bhagwan's name, having faith in God, understanding God's will that this is Bhagwan's doing, and walking in a very calm fashion. The Akantik Satpurush also is very, very poised in all situation is very stable and calm and it's only due to one understanding to believing Bhagwan to be all doer think about it anything even according to the Vachnamrut even a dry leaf cannot be stirred or moved without the wish of God even a blade of grass cannot be cut without the wish of God then what is it that these living people are doing this? How can this not be the wish of God? This is the understanding that Bhagwan Swaminarayan provides for us in the Vachnamrut and also expects us to implement this knowledge in our day-to-day -day life as a devotee. From his jungle hideout, Valaravuru saw the small party being brought in from afar he raised the barrel of his rifle and looked down looked down the sights to take aim as the group moved closer he was able to make out the figure of the saffron robed swami approaching striking by a feeling that he couldn't understand he slowly lowered his gun and watched transfixed as swami walked straight towards him generally gently put his hand on his shoulder and said, You seem to be Valero Varu. As if Swami's presence had cast a spell on him, Valero folded his hands and humbly asked, Maharaj, which band of wandering sadhus are you a part of? Swami's presence, God's presence inside of Swami, can be felt here in this situation, this scene. Because as Swami approached Valero Varu, instead of Valero firing his gun, instead of Valero behaving in a cruel fashion, just by mere sight, just by mere touch of Sadguru Gunatitan and Swami, Valero's senses and mind were completely calmed. The Satpurusha's Lakshan is that whenever you sit in front of the Satpurush or whenever you are in close proximity of the Satpurush, 
your indriyas and antakaran, your mind and your, your senses become very, very dull or blunt. And in that way, one does not feel any kind of poise to, or when he, one does not feel any kind of thought or action to do anything unpious. That's how much of an effect the Satpurush plays on the soul. We can give an example or take the example of radiation. Radiation is lethal and whoever is exposed to it for a certain amount of time definitely will feel its effects on one's DNA and definitely one will die. And if one does not die then in in their ancestry or you can say in, in their in their family lineage the effects of uh, radiation will be seen but if we reverse that radiation in a good way the Satpurush has this kind of radiation which is coming from him while he's walking talking while he's on this earth that whoever whichever soul is exposed to this radiation this aura this divinity becomes completely subdued by his charm such is the radiation of a satpurush and due to that radiation soul's liberation is is done without the satpurush coming on this earth by the wish of god how can the soul attain liberation who will show that soul back to god who will help that soul understand that Bhagwan Swaminathan is supreme, he has a divine form, he is Sarvakarta, he is Pragat, he is manifest. Who will explain this? Who will show us this way besides the compassionate Satpurush? That's why Bhagwan has this constant compassion of sending his Ekantik Satpurush here on this earth and giving us this precious and rare and priceless teaching without these teachings without these principles there is no way the soul can attain Bhagwan Swami Narayan or his divine abode Akshardham but Valero Varu's destiny has opened today Valero Varu's destiny has opened in such a way that Sadhguru Gunatitanan Swami has glanced a compassion, compassionate eye upon his soul. And due to that Swami, just by taking his hand and putting on his shoulder, completely changed Valerovaru's thought process. Swami replied, We are not a band of wandering sadhus, but rather followers of Swami Narayan Bhagwan. We worship God and inspire others to do the same. We have a mandir in Junagar and we were on our way to Una, it's a village, when we got lost and your men brought us here. The genuine care in Swami's face, the love evident in his words and the compassion in his gaze all combined to bring a transformative effect on Valero's heart, as mentioned before. The cruel thoughts of slaughtering these sadhus that he had been harboring just moments before suddenly vanished and were replaced with feelings of reverence and gratitude. He told Swami, Maharaj, we are privileged by uh, your holy presence. Today I think my destiny has taken a turn for the better. Valera turned to his men and barked. What are you doing just standing there? Give these sadhus some rice, sugar, and pots of milk so they can prepare a meal. Then he told Swami, Maharaj, please prepare such some dutpak. We have no shortage of provisions. If you all bless us by eating our food, I feel that fortune will surely smile upon us. See the transformation that took place on Valero Varu. And how Valido Varu completely changed his ways and decided of instead of slaughtering these sadhus, he gave provisions in the form of rice, milk, and sugar, and told and requested Santos to make 
an Indian delicacy which is called dutpak. Then he told Swami, Maharaj, please prepare some dutpak. Detecting a dormant kindness in his heart, his cruel occupation, Swami gently asked, Darbar, why have you taken to such a life of banditry? While well, let I explain, Maharaj, my half-brother took my share of the family property and he won't return it despite all of my efforts to negotiate a peaceful settlement. Finally, being left with no alternative, I have taken up this, this way of life. Swami countered, because you have a disagreement with your brother, they are harassing innocent civilians. What kind of justice is this? Will slaughtering these innocent animals and people bring your property back? Now going back to, back to that point in the beginning that there is four kinds of Satpurushas. According to the Vachnamrut Vardatal 3rd chapter, Bhagwan Swaminarayan mentions that there are four types of eminent spiritual people, meaning Satpurush. One is a small flame, the second is a, like a torch, the third is like lightning, and the fourth is like the Vardhavanan fire. He who is like a small flame is extinguished by wind in the form of the Vishes. He who is like a torch is extinguished by stronger gust of winds in the form of Vishes. He who is like lightning is not extinguished either by rainwater in the form of Maya. The Vardhavanam fire, however, stays in the ocean without being extinguished by ocean water. It drinks the sea water and excretes it from the form of sweet water. In turn, the clouds carry this water and shower it upon the world. And from this, many types of taste are formed. Similarly, the great Satpurush, like the Varvanam fire, transforms even the salty jeeves who are like the saline water, sea water, into sweet jeeves. Of the four types of eminent spiritual people just described, if a person serves one who is like lightning or the Vadvanam fire by thought, word, and deed while staying within the tenets of one's dharma, then, bhak then bhakti coupled with the knowledge of God's greatness will develop in that person. So, Sadguru Gunatitan Swami, hands down, is the fourth type of Satpurush, which is the Vardhvanam fire. Vardhvanam fire, if I can put it into context here, is simply an underwater volcano. There are underwater volcanoes active still here on this earth, and these underwater volcanoes constantly spew lava. Even that water that's there, that is tons and tons of water which is surrounding that volcano has no effect it has no effect the coolness has no effect and that lava is so hot that the salty water around it becomes fresh water that is a transformation process that takes place in science and Bhagwan Swaminare even 236 years ago, knowing this very fact, used this beautiful metaphor in this context with the Yakantik Satpurush and similarized it, matched it to help the mere small human brain understand how he sends such kind of Satpurushes on this earth. Sadguru Gunatitan Swami was such a Satpurush and through his life, he changed many, many from dicots into pure people. Continuing on, Valera's evil deeds flashed before his eyes. He recalled the scene of an incident of, of an innocent youth fresh from his marriage ceremony, who he had shot dead despite the anguished, tearful pleading of his newly married bride. Countless such horrific, horrific deeds had failed to stir any feeling in his stony heart. While today, Swami, Swami's every word struck him with the force of a body blow. Tears 
began to flow down his cheeks. He folded his hands and said, Mother, Father, I don't deny that I have committed countless terrible sins, but at the same time, I don't think I can give up this way of life unless my rightful property is returned to me. This was his only request. Swami blessed him. Darbar, your property will be returned to you in seven days. Your brother will send his send you a peace settlement and everything will turn out all right. This was Swami's blessings. Swami had no blood relation. Swami had no kind of any contact. This was the first time Unatidan, Swami and Valero were, were meeting. But the Satpurush has compassion in his heart. And that, compa that compassion is so much, so deep, so deep, that there is no type of measuring mechanism or device on this earth that can understand the Satpurusha's compassion. According to the Vachnam Gadada, first chapter 58, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that when the Satpurush becomes Raji upon a soul, then that soul, no matter how it may be, that a beggar becomes a king. Unfortunate circumstances become very fortunate, and all the favorable circumstance, all the unfavorable circumstances become favorable. Such is the miracle of attaining the rajipo of a satpurush. And here, Valero Varu felt and gained and attained even just a little, but very valuable amount of, of rajipo from Sadguru Shri Gunatitan and Swami. With Swami's blessings, Valero felt a wellspring of joy burst forth from his heart. After a few moments of silence, he asked Maharaj, meaning Swami, how will I know the seven days had passed? Now, he was illiterate. This Darbar, Valero Varu was illiterate. He, he did not know how to count even till seven. Today, Swami had decided to shower His grace on this illiterate Darbar who had never learned to count. So He replied, Bring me a rope, meaning a, a rope. Swami was immediately presented with a small piece of rope. Swami tied seven knots in the rope and told, and told the Darbar, Every morning when the sun rises, untie one knot in this rope. Once all of these knots are untied, you will get your land back. Look at how compassion Sadguru Gunathi and Swami. Valeruvaru did not know how to count, so Swami devised a plan and gave this rope with seven knots and told him to untie it, giving him hope. Valero was overjoyed. Today he had the double blessings of being liberated from the sins of his violence and attaining Swami's grace. With the trust of an innocent child, he asked Swami, should I start untying the knot, knots from today or tomorrow? Swami laughed, took the rope from his hand and untied one knot. Then he said, now untie the next, the next knot tomorrow morning. Every day for seven days, he untied a knot, and on the seventh day, as Swami promised and foresaw, Valuro received a letter saying that your brother has forgiven you and is giving your land back and asking for a settlement to be made. This was a miracle done by Valuro Varu or by Gunati and Swami and Valuro Varu. But what to gain from this story? What to gain, how to understand this story? Well, Sadguru Gunathya and Swami not only performed the liberation of souls, but also talked in Junagad Savamandap by the Agna of Maharaj. And his talks were recollected and collected in, they were called Sadguru Gunathya and Swami Vato. From his very Vat, there is a talk from Prakran 1, meaning chapter 1. Talk number 15, that the Jeev is certainly purified through the nine forms of devotion 
and on their endeavors, but not to the extent it is purified by the talks of God's holy sadhu. There is nothing as powerful as the words of the Satpurush. We're very fortunate to have such a Satpurush who gives us such kind of Kathavarta in the form of our Puja Guruji. Our only task and duty now is to join our soul with the Satpurush and do as he says. And before we know it, we'll be on our way to Akshadam. While little Varu had such kind of sins, we do not have any of these sins. We have not done anything wrong to this kind of extent. So, there is nothing to worry about. But just to do as our Puja Guruji says in his Agna, live in his words. And by doing so slowly but surely, he will transform our soul into something that Bhagwan will like. And from there, Bhagwan will accept us and take us to his divine abode, Akshradham. Saying this, we can understand Gunathyan Swami had such kind of a perspective and he lived his life in such kind of way. Our Puja Guruji here right now lives his life in such kind of way. And from this, we can understand that we should also take refuge in such a Satpurush and change our ways so that we can attain Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Rajipo and attain his Akshardham. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.